says the amendment goes too far in declaring this right to hunt and fish as a public right. No other right in our constitution is described in this way. It seems to imply that this right is even more important than our other fundamental rights. I'm gonna stop there right quick. Why, oh why, is it that we do not have the fundamental right to healthcare in the state of Florida? Why isn't that written into the constitution? Healthcare as a human right is not written Housing as a human right is not written in our constitution. Why? We can have the fundamental right to hunt and fish, but we can't have the fundamental right to housing? We can't have the fundamental right to health care? We can't have the fundamental right to education, especially higher education? But they want to do it for hunting and fishing even though we already have that right oh yeah all right so whatever you feel about hunting or fishing if you like hunting or fishing or if you don't i think this is also another amendment that you guys need to pay attention to and this really is an important one uh, that a lot of people aren't paying attention to when it comes to the amendments. This is in a series that we're uh, doing uh, to talk about the amendments for Florida for 2024 ballot initiatives. So if you guys need to know what it is, what it means, and how it will affect you in your daily lives as citizens in this state, you guys need to pay attention to this. So we're going to go and we're going to talk about the explanation of Amendment 2 in Florida for the ballot initiative. So let's get into it right here. So Florida Amendment 2, right to hunt and fish. This is going to be interesting, says the Florida right to hunt and fish amendment was on the ballot in Florida as a legislatively referred constitutional amendment on November 5th, 2024. A yes vote supports establishing a constitutional right to hunt and fish in Florida. A no vote opposes establishing a constitutional right to hunt and fish in Florida. So you need a supermajority, which is 60 votes, to require to approve the amendment in Florida. So let's go over the overview. What would the amendment do? says the ballot measure would provide a state constitutional right to hunt and fish and declare that hunting and fishing are the preferred means for, quote, responsibly managing and controlling fish and wildlife and shall be preserved forever as a public right, end quote. The amendment would not limit the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's constitutional powers under Article 4, Section 9 says, do other states have constitutional right to hunt and fish? Says, as of 2023, a total of 23 states had the constitutional provisions that protect the right to hunt and fish. This right was first constitutionalized in Vermont in 1777, with 22 additional states following suit, starting with the Alabama, with Alabama in 1996. The most recent state to adopt such an a, a, amendment was Utah, where it was approved by 75% of voters in 2020 says, what are supporters and opponents saying about the amendment? So we will get into this. So uh, the supporters say, yes on two is leading the campaign in support of the amendment. Uh, it says, yes on two, hunting and fishing bans were considered in at least a dozen states in 2022. So far, 23 states have passed the constitutional right to fish and hunt amendment. Florida is not yet one of those states. Amendment 2 is definitively protects our rights to fish and hunt in the state of Florida, while bans were considered in at least a dozen states last year, including a push to criminalize hunting and fishing and farming. Amendment 2 will prevent extremists from taking away our rights. Pay attention to the language that they're saying. 
extremists taking away your right to hunt and fish. Interesting. So, no to two says is leading the campaign in opposition to the measure. No to two said the amendment is a threat to wildlife. And that even though the planet has lost 69% of its wildlife over the past 50 years, this amendment will create a fundamental right in the Florida Constitution to hunt and fish using traditional methods. The group also said this ill-advised amendment could be used to override protections for fish stocks, such as effectively nullifying the prohibition on gill nets that are a wall of death in the sea. Now, we'll get more deeper into this as we go on. Text of the measure says, this is how it's going to appear on the ballot. It says, right to fish and hunt, proposing an amendment to the state constitution to preserve forever fishing and hunting, including by the use of traditional methods as a public right and preferred methods of responsibly managing and controlling fish and wildlife, specifies that the amendment does not limit the authority granted to the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission under Section 9 of Article 4 of the state constitution constitutional changes so it basically says what i just stated so here are the supporters so state senator jim boyd state representative lauren Mello, house speaker paul renner they're all republicans so here are the organizations that support it all florida american sport fishing association uh, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, Bonefish Tarpon Trust, Bonefish and Tarpon Trust, I'm sorry, Coastal Conservation Association, Congressional Sportsman's Foundation, uh, Delta Waterfowl, Everglades Coordinating Council, Florida Airboat Association, Florida Guides Association, Florida Sportsman's Con Conservation Association, Future Hunting in Florida, International Order of Theodore Roosevelt, National Deer Association, National Shooting Sports Foundation, Safari Club International. Now, one thing I notice about all these are these associations are particularly ones that are behind the hunting and fishing business. So just think about that. So let's continue. Arguments. So this is the arguments from the supporters. This is from Martha Gullias, the Southeast Fishers Policy Director for the American Sport Fishing Association. Florida is an incredibly important state for the sport fishing industry and is considered the fishing capital of the world. Did you know this? We're not only the lightning capital of the world, but we're also the fishing capital of the world. Florida is a swamp. Okay. All right. That makes sense. It says our state attracts more than 4.3 million anglers who make fishing in Florida an economic engine that contributes $14 billion in economic output and support more than 120,000 jobs. There is fishing gear upon fishing gear in Walmarts. There is an outdoor world brought to you by Bass Pro Shops right down the street, right? We have them everywhere. And so fishing upon fishing or peninsula, you can fish either in the, on, in the Gulf. You can go fishing, you know, on the Atlantic. You can go fishing, you know, south of the Caribbean. You can fish at Lake Okeechobee, you can fish close to here in Lake Tyler, you can fish in Lake Buchanan. There's so many different lakes, there's so many different creeks and streams where you can fish. Notice I say you can, meaning it's a right already. Okay, all right, so let's continue. House Speaker Paul Renner says the amendment will permanently preserve Floridians' right to fish and hunt for generations. Floridians have used fishing and hunting as a means to provide for themselves and for their families. How many people actually fish still and fish and hunt right now? Uh, I don't know too many that still fish, 
But I mean, I've been fishing before. It's cool. Especially when, you know, you get some good ones. I mean, you know, there's a fish place for that too far from here. I mean, that catfish is damn good. State Senator Jim Boyd says it's really hard to believe that there are states that are outlawing fishing and hunting. Florida would not be one of those states. Says state, step, state Rep. Lauren Mello says the amendment about the is about the heritage of Florida. Many people don't realize the economic value of fishing and hunting provides for our great state, combining just over $15 billion annually. People come from all over the world to catch our tarpon and snapper and chase our turkeys and ducks. Passing this legislation is a powerful statement that we support in championing our fishing and hunting traditions, and we want to protect them for our future. Now, here's the oppose. It says no to two is leading the campaign in opposition to the amendment. So here are the opponents. Now, one of the corporations is Human Wildlife Consulting of South Florida. Organizations are American Ecosystems, Animal Wellness Action, Bailey Sutton Hospital PA Program, Bear Defenders, College, Career College of Northern Nevada, Center for Humane Economy, Citizen Access Incorporate, Fix and Feed, Feline Feral Incorporate, Florence Darlington Technical College, Florida Bar Animal Law Section, Humane Society of the United States, Humane Wildlife Consulting of South Florida, Internal Visions Homes Incorporate, Lassen County Community College, League of Humane Voters in Florida, One Protest, Pause and rec pause and recreation. <laughs> That's hilarious. I like that. Rutgers, New Jersey School, Medical School. Sarasota Vegan Society, SaveAturtle.org. Speak Up Wakaiva Inc. Speak Up for Wildlife. Speak Up for Wildlife Inc. Workforce Homes Inc. World Animal Protection, Warsham College. Here's the arguments against. Amendment 2 says, Humane Wildlife Consulting of South Florida says, we're in the midst of a global extinction crisis and climate crisis. Our wildlife need a break from the carnage. We should be accelerating measures to alleviate the harm being done and mitigate damage, which includes taking protective measures to eliminate as best we can the unnecessary trapping and senseless killing of our wildlife and to incentivize non-lethal control measures. Note to two, they say, even though the planet has lost 69% of its wildlife over the past 50 years, the amendment will create a fundamental right in Florida constitution to hunt and fish using traditional methods. So I already read this earlier. Speak Up Wakaiva says, the right to hunt and fish already exists in Florida statutes. I'm going to stop right there. The right to hunt and fish already exists. If the right to hunt and fish didn't exist, we wouldn't be making $14 billion a year over it. The right's already there. Now, let's continue. Says the NRA and its political operatives are trying to convince Floridians that hunting and fishing are in jeopardy. They are not currently, but if Amendment 2 passes, it will make fishing a public right opening up our waters to massive foreign commercial fishing vessels. A public right is not restricted to just Florida citizens. Laws are necessary to restrict bad actors from depleting our ocean of fish and our forests of native wildlife. Do you really want to give hunters the right to walk onto your property in pursuit of a raccoon or a bear? This amendment will lead to hunters trespassing on private property, emboldened with their new constitutional right, as they have done in other states and have passed similar amendments. I personally would not want, if I own a home, I would not want somebody with a rifle coming onto my property, onto my land, trying to catch a bear or a raccoon. That's dangerous. And I'm black? I'm just saying, y'all. I'm just saying. And what if I have a pet? 
What if I have a dog? What if it's nighttime and they're hunting and they're looking for a black bear, but I have a black lab or I have a Rottweiler, right? What if they accidentally shoot my pet or my property? See? See? Think about it now. Now, from Clay Henderson, author of Forces of Nature, A History of Florida Land Conservation, and President Emeritus of the Florida Audubon Society. Now, says the amendment goes too far in declaring this right to hunt and fish as a public right. No other right in our Constitution is described in this way. It seems to imply that this right is even more important than our other fundamental rights. I'm going to stop there right quick. Why, oh, why is it that we do not have the fundamental right to health care in the state of Florida? Why isn't that written into the Constitution? Health care as a human right is not written. Housing as a human right is not written in our Constitution. Why? We can have the fundamental right to hunt and fish, but we can't have the fundamental right to housing? We can't have the fundamental right to health care? We can't have the fundamental right to education, especially higher education? But they want to do it for hunting and fishing. Even though we already have that right. Think about it, y'all. Think about it. It says, perhaps this is meant to, the, perhaps it means this right to hunt is more important than one's right to possess and protect property. The language in the NRA proposal states, this section shall not be construed to modify any provision of law relating to the trespass or property rights. But the Florida legislator didn't include that important restriction. The biggest concern for me and other mainstream conservationists is that the amendment proclaims hunting and fishing as the preferred means of responsibly managing and controlling fish and wildlife. Really? Often the preferred means to conserve fish and wildlife is to limit hunting, and fishing to protect their numbers. That is why we have limits on the size of fish that can be taken and seasons for hunting. I want to stop here for a second. Do you guys remember the 2023 uh, king crab fishing season? No, because it didn't happen. In Alaska, they canceled crab fishing. They canceled it. Why? Because their numbers were so low from overfishing for crabs in Alaska. The Alaskan crab season was canceled because they depleted the numbers that much. You don't think that can't happen here in Florida when it comes to our different populations and fish and wildlife? You see, if you actually care about being outdoors, if you care about being able to hunt and fish, that means you have to now respect the, you have to respect the environment and this delicate balance. You have to, because if you don't, if you go my rights, right, to do whatever the hell I want, and if you don't respect that balance, then you're gonna lose it. And we know the, the people who are for this amendment, they know that there's a balance. Just like the Cone the, the, 
the colonizers who came here and in order to deplete the population of the natives in this country, they destroyed, they killed millions of buffalo because they knew that the natives depended on buffalo for food, clothing, and shelter. They knew that that delicate balance and then they exploited that delicate balance by killing all the buffalo. Not because they actually needed the food, clothing, and shelter that they would provide, but because they wanted to get at the natives. And so they know that there is a delicate balance. Just like now, people know that there's a delicate balance. And if you give people carte blanche to do whatever they want without regulation, then guess what? It's going to harm the environment severely. Severely. And then when we start complaining about, oh man, we, for instance, if certain populations explode while other ones diminish, then we then we start complaining because you disrupted that balance. That's just science, right? And unfortunately, a lot of people don't think about it. It's just like you can have an explosion of population of deer, but that deer population explosion would be because the, the diminishing of population of the wolves. Because people hunting wolves or hunting bears that may eat the deer. And if you, the deer population explodes, then guess what? A lot of the foliage is going to get eaten up. So you have to maintain that balance. Can't go too far in one way. You can't go too far in another way. This is why we have to maintain that balance. This is why the right still exists, but there's limitations. Just like there are limitations on where you can build things, right? There's no law saying you have the right to build whatever building you want, wherever you want. That doesn't exist. Why? Because those regulations exist for a reason not just for our protection, but for the protection of the environment. And the protection of the environment means protection for us because we live in it. That's why. All right. Now. It says this, that's why we have limits on the size of fish that can be taken in seasons for hunting. This is why there's a bear season. This is why... There's a raccoon season. There's a duck season. There's a turkey season. It says populations of grouper, red snapper, and redfish have been severely regulated as their numbers have declined. Allowing more fishing will not increase their numbers. We don't allow bear hunting in Florida because the bear population is confined to isolated areas and may not be sustainable. Many of us think this proposal is just a door to bring back bear hunting. As one of the few lawyers who have drafted most of the environmental provisions of Florida's constitution, I can tell you that every word matters in a proposed amendment. That is why another section of this proposal is scary. It proclaims that this right to hunt and fish includes the use of traditional methods shall be preserved forever. What does this mean? To me, it clearly means to return to steel jaw traps spears, spear fishing, gill nets, and other inhumane means of hunting and fishing. And let me tell you something. If you don't think that bear traps that are there to hunt bears as well as wolves will not be left out in the wild for a human to step on and get their foot trapped in it, then you're sadly mistaken because that can happen too. So I guess you can say what way I support. But the thing is that ultimately this is going to affect us because guess what? You start to affect populations 
that also regulate maybe snakes and other type of reptiles in Florida, we can have a population explosion of some things that we may not want because you disrupt the balance. This is why we still will always have our constitutional right, but we need to have regulations in place in order to make sure that we do not disrupt that balance. Because sometimes if you give humans an inch, we will take a mile. Now, uh, let's continue down here. Uh, now the opposition um, media editorials. This is from the Orlando Sentinel Board. It says this amendment could also have a significant impact on the state's ability to manage public lands against wildfires and flooding. Remember, we live in Florida. This is a swamp. Some analysts have suggested that this amendment could even trump the rights of private property owners to restrict hunting on their own land. Meaning, if you got a house, you got a farm, people can hunt on your land. Do you, you want your kids playing out in the yard and somebody's trying to shoot at a bear or a raccoon or a possum and your kid gets shot? Mm. Got to think about these things, especially to y'all in rural Florida. So that's it could certainly tie the hands of future lawmakers to respond to currently unforeseen environmental consequences of hunting, such as Florida's ban on gillnet fishing or its most recent laws against the gruesome internet hunt sites that allow online users to fire real guns loaded with real ammunition at Florida wildlife using remote control and webcams a practice so dangerous and wasteful that has been banned in 42 states. That is why this amendment seems so scary. Nobody can say exactly what it can do or how much harm it can cause. Meanwhile, the only arguments it's in favor seem to rest on the fallacy that hunting and fishing in Florida are under attack. So what's the point of putting it on the ballot? The best argument we can see for this stinker is that it's bait intended to draw out low information far-right voters who can easily be swindled into believing that their rights are somehow under attack and who will presumably be voting conservative across the rest of the ballot. So, this also shows a who has a constitutional right to hunt and fish. As you can see, uh, the right to hunt and fish, is, the right to fish is in California, and it looks like Rhode Island. Yeah. And then the right to hunt and fish is in all these states, especially the southern states. So you have Mississippi, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, West Virginia, Kentucky. I'm sorry, not West Virginia, Kentucky, um, Indiana, Mississippi, Louisiana, uh, Arkansas. Oklahoma, you know, Kansas, Texas, Nebraska, Wyoming, Utah, Idaho, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Funny that it's not actually in um, Alaska. I would have thought Alaska, but no. But yes, so that is this ballot. Now, how would I be voting? I would vote no. No, because the thing is, it's like there's a delicate balance and I want us to be able to continue to hunt and fish. Now, I do not agree with hunting for sport. I just don't. I'm like, if you're going to hunt for something, then you better be ready to eat it or wear it. Right. If you're not planning to eat it or wear it, then I don't believe in hunting. Sorry, that's how I feel. But my thing is, it's like, I feel like hunting and fishing is something that inherently human. That's something that we have done for centuries. And the thing is, it's like, I also believe that we should be able to preserve hunting and fishing. I believe that we should preserve hunting and fishing. 
uh, for the rest of our lives. But in order to be able to do that, you have to keep the balance in place. And if you don't want to keep that balance in place, then yeah, you can hunt and fish all you want, but you're going to get rid of the, 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 the environment that we need in order to keep these things around. If we overfish and our grouper goes away or if our, if our snapper goes away, then what? Because we overfished. You know what I'm saying? If we hunt the bears into extinction, then you can't cry about the balance that we have is being disrupted. This is why I'm such a big proponent of ending climate change, real climate change in the real way, not this green uh, green capitalism that they try to push on us, but ending real climate change. Because if you enjoy the outdoors, then you should be also wanting to conserve the outdoors. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's why I personally will be voting no on Amendment 2 because I want to actually conserve so that if I wanted to go fishing, let's say me and my boyfriend want to go fishing one day and I want to catch some catfish because I want to skin it, fry it, and then have it with some hush puppies, and I'll be able to do that. Speaking of which, I need to go ahead and get some catfish after this because I'm hungry. But, yes. Vote no on Amendment 2. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.